Hello, good morning. Welcome to morning prayer. I've just added a link for this service. Good morning, Judith. Good morning, Carol. Let me just give you the readings. This is our first morning prayer for Lent 2022. Good morning, Evelyn. Let me give you the readings if you prefer to follow with your Bible at home. So we have Psalm 3, Genesis chapter 40. And Galatians 3 verses 1 to 14 with a reflection from I've ordered the, the, the book in for Lent and so if you're going to want this to accompany your prayers during the day that's it there reflections for Lent Church House Publishing. My fingers aren't very fast this morning. Let's Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Sunny. can hear the birds outside. I'm not sure if you can, but I, I can. The dawn chorus. Let's just pause for a moment as we get ready to worship the Lord. I welcome you this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us light. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. 
Psalm 3. The refrain is, You, Lord, are a shield about me. You, Lord, are a shield about me. Lord, how many are my adversaries? Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say to my soul, There is no help for you in our God. You, Lord, are a shield about me. But you, Lord, are a shield about me. You are my glory and the lifter up of my head. When I cry aloud to the Lord, he will answer me from his holy hill. I will lie down and sleep and rise again, because the Lord sustains me. I will not be afraid of hordes of the peoples that have set themselves against me all around. Lord, you are a you, Lord, are a shield about me. Rise up, O Lord, and deliver me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek and break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. May your blessing be upon your people. You, Lord, are a shield about me. Let us pray. Shield us, Lord, from all evil and lift us up from apathy and despair, that even when we are terrified, we may trust your power to save through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 40. Joseph sold into slavery by his brothers. Worked in the household of Potiphar and now finds himself languishing in jail. Sometimes, sometime after this, the cupbearer of the king of Egypt and his baker offered their lord the king of Egypt Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, oh, offended their lord, the king of Egypt. Sorry, shall I just start this again? Some time after this, the cupbearer of the king of Egypt and his baker offended their lord, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker, and he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, in the prison where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and he waited on them and they continued for some time in custody. One night they both dreamed. The cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt who were confined in the prison, each his own dream, and each dream with its own meaning. When Joseph came to them in the morning, he saw that they were troubled. So he asked Pharaoh's officers, who were with him in custody in his master's house, Why are your faces downcast today? They said to him, We have had dreams and there is no one to interpret them. And Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Please tell them to me. So the chief cupbearer told his dream to Joseph and said to him, in my dream there was a vine before me and on the vine there were three branches. As soon as it budded its blossoms came out 
and the clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. Then Joseph said to him, this is its interpretation. The three branches are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your office and you shall place Pharaoh's cup in his hand just as you used to do when you were his cup-bearer. But remember me when it is well with you. Please do me the kindness to make mention of me to Pharaoh and so get me out of this place. For in fact I was stolen out of the land of the Hebrews and here also I have done nothing that they, have should, me, sh they should have put me into the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was favourable, he said to Joseph, I also had a dream. There were three cake baskets on my head and in the uppermost basket there were all sorts of baked food for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating it out of the basket on my head. And Joseph answered, this is its interpretation. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head from you and hang you on a pole and the birds will eat the flesh from you. On the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, he made a feast for all his servants and lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and the head of the chief baker among his servants. He restored the chief cupbearer to his cupbearing and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But the chief baker he hanged, just as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet, the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Our canticle this morning is the Song of Manasseh. The refrain at the beginning and the end is Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High the Almighty, full of compassion and mercy and love, is God the Most High, the Almighty. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you who made heaven and earth in all their glory, all things tremble with awe at your presence before your great and mighty power. Immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy, for you are God most high. You are full of compassion, long-suffering and very merciful, and you relent at human suffering. O God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look up to the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. And now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O God, I have sinned and I acknowledge my transgressions. Unworthy as I am, you will save me according to your great mercy. For all the host of heaven sings your praise, and your glory is for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. 
full of compassion and mercy and love, is God the Most High, the Almighty. Our New Testament reading this morning is from St Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly exhibited as crucified. The only thing I want to learn from you is this. Did you receive the Spirit by doing the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? Having started with the Spirit, are you now ending with the flesh? Did you experience so much for nothing? If it really was for nothing. Well then, does God supply you with the Holy S with the Spirit and work miracles among you by your doing the works of the law? Or by your believing what you heard? Just as Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, so you see, those who believe are the descendants of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing what God would justify the Gentiles by faith, declared the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All the Gentiles shall be blessed in you. For this reason, those who believe are blessed with Abraham who believed. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not obey, observe and obey all the things written in the book of the law. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law. For the one who is righteous will live with by faith. But the law does not rest on faith. On the contrary, whoever does the works of the law will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, in order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If we have a little silence just to reflect on what we may have heard in our readings this morning. Good morning, Eileen. note from Reverend Eileen, the passage in Genesis is full of the tough stuff of the world, while God's great mercy and compassion is unchanging and ultimately the deliverer. response to your question Tracy this is a sheep a felted sheep made by our Rosie for me my first felted project so she knows how much I love sheep in all shapes and sizes
We pray this for the people and leaders of Ukraine. Oh Lord, you are, O oh Lord, a shield about them. Thank you, our Lord. And Judith, praying for all who need this, even when we are terrified, we may trust your power to save. So much relies on doing stuff with God, not on our own or independently. Thank you, Tracy. Takes us back to I am the vine and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So our reflection this morning, if you've just joined us, is from this book. Church House Publishing's Reflections for Lent. Our reflection today is by Philip North, Bishop of Burnley. And his focus is on our Old Testament reading, Genesis 40, verse 8. Do not interpretations belong to God? That was Joseph's response in the prison. How can we tell? what the future holds. In ancient Egypt, a chief method was through the interpretation of dreams. The butler and the baker, both imprisoned by Pharaoh, would have been desperate to know their future as revealed to them by their vivid dreams of grapes and baskets. But they were denied access to the skilled magicians and wise men who could have performed the task. They would not have expected to find a solution in a fellow prisoner, let alone a Hebrew. But Joseph cheekily comes to their rescue. He may not have any training, but he asks, do not interpretations belong to God? Behind that simple question there lies the most massive theological claim. If God can interpret dreams then the future must lie in God's hands. Joseph is claiming the sovereignty of the God of the Hebrews over all time and eternity. Today as Christians we have no need for diviners or dream interpreters to tell the future. That future is revealed to us by the dying and rising of Jesus. It is set forth in the scriptures and in the creeds and teachings of the church. The future is Christ and the fullness of life in him. It is he who meets us in the prison cell of our mortality and sets us free. We can know for sure that all in the end will be glorious. And from Eileen, despite being disappointed by the forgetfulness of the cupbearer, it will be Joseph's believing in the Lord that brings him to God's deliverance. Amen. So let us respond to our scripture this morning with words from Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope 
all the day long. O oh my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. In the words of the Benedictus, the refrain at the beginning and the end is Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Time now for our intercessions, our prayers. And we'll have some silent prayer and pray for Ukraine. Let me just read another comment from Reverend Isla. May our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and in Russia who hunger and thirst for righteousness be satisfied. Lord of the power of compassion and mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. morning Lord we pray for your church that all who proclaim to follow you will trust in your goodness and mercy will trust that your promises are true and that you are always by our right hand We pray this morning for anyone who may have lost hope. We pray for anyone unable to sleep for the things that worry and concern them. We pray for those who cry out to you for help in their distress. And we pray for justice and mercy. The 
an end to structures that hurt people and an end to this awful war in Ukraine. Unite your church as one, as the body of Christ. May we pray, act and love the people around us as your Son, our Saviour, called us to do. We give you thanks for all that is good at this time. We give you thanks for all who are supporting refugees, supporting those who stay in Ukraine, We pray for a united front from the world and actions that will reduce the length of days of this conflict. And may your church be mobilised, Lord. To do good. care for and support all who are affected by this awful act of aggression. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, as our children have celebrated World Book Day yesterday, As so many dressed up in their favourite characters. They attended their schools, played with their friends, were inspired by their teachers. The reality of the contrast for all children caught up in violence and war all children displaced as refugees, for all children who are traumatised by events around them, the difference could, the difference was so stark. And so a prayer for all children, Lord, wherever they are today. prayer that you will protect them from anything that may harm and surround them with people who will love and care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving God, we each arrive before you today with our own concerns and prayers and we just offer them to you now into this silence, the deepest prayers of our hearts.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick at this time in mind, body or spirit. We pray for all who care for them and walk with them. And we also pray for anyone in long-term residential care. We pray that they will be loved and treated with dignity. And we pray by name for those on our parish prayer list as we pray for John Ellison, Jessica McCaskill, Carrie Waggett, Doreen Moy, Andrew Garvick, Mrs Hewitt, Pat Middleton, Dorothy Macbeth, Stella Matthews, Michael Hughes, Chris Haynes, John Pike, Ann Taylor, Rod Taylor, Carol Woodfield, Christine, Beatrice Yorston, Wynne Alderslid, Gillian, Mavis, Grant Macbeth, Susan Fisher, Ruth Evans, Marjorie Carruthers, Anne Henderson, Brenda Prophet, Stan, Gary, Jim, John Thorburn, Ashton, Marion, Betty Hall, Isla Mohammed, Gary Patterson, Jonathan Hall, June Barris, Judith, Derek Yorston, Tracy, Valerie, Tony, Michelle, George Dunn, Maureen McLaughlin, Malcolm Fisher, Margaret Austin, Jimmy Finn, Baby Chloe Grace Taylor, Killian Coyles, June Q, Tom Piggott, Stephen, Christine Langley, Les Robinson, Raymond Steele, Minnie Johansson, and for those on our hearts today. May they know your healing presence, your comfort and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who are receiving end-of-life care at this time, praying for their loved ones, for all who care for them at home, hospital or hospice. We pray for all who have died recently and all those who grieve. We pray for anyone attending a, a funeral today or planning a funeral at this time. And we pray for Jackie, our pastoral minister, and for all the families she is caring for in your name. And we pray for the repose of the soul by name, for Linda Wilson, Hugh Martin, Joan Rees, Sheila Thompson, Shirley Wilson, Brian Robinson, Mary Nixon. We commend them to you, Lord, as we commend all those we love but no longer see. We commend them into your eternal care. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. And the collect of the day, let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, 
may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God our Redeemer show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. you for your beautiful comments and prayers. Thank you for praying for one another. of your description of our prayer time together Judah thanks for this scaffolding in the midst of all that is going on and we are fortunate we've prayed together it must be almost two years some of us and a turbulent time indeed so we put our trust in God one who is faithful But thank you for being here. Our next service on the live stream will be Sunday, 10 o'clock. So it's the first Sunday of the month and that's when we have our All Age Parish Eucharist. And this month we're at St Peter's. And we will be praying for Ukraine. We'll have some prayer stations. And we'll have some crafts for the children as well to learn. So if you do have little ones and you're looking for a, a way to come to church for yourself and for them, um, 10 o'clock at St Peter's on York Avenue. Um, four o'clock on Sunday, not on live stream, we have the first of our Sunday afternoon stations of the cross at St John the Baptist's on Nairn Street. You're very welcome to join us there. And I'll put up a little flyer with the full programme for Lent, Holy Week and Easter, including the live stream sessions. If you would like us to pray with you or for you, please send us a private message. And if you'd like to go on our mailing list and receive information, again, if you let us know by private message, and we will come back. So as the world looks on and our thoughts are with the people of Ukraine and their neighbours who are welcoming the refugees right now. Whatever you are doing this today and this weekend, let me send you on into Friday with God's blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you this day and always and grant you his peace and the blessing of God Almighty, 
the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with you and those who you love this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.